I think the grace of Heavenly Mother, compassion of Buddha Mitreya, Jigong Buddha, virtue of Patria, Sujun Simu, and also Grand Master, Senior Master, and Junior Master for allowing me this opportunity to share this session. Today, we are going to continue the Invocation Sutra. So the Invocation Sutra is what Master recite during the Tao ceremony. So the Dharma protector that we are going to talk about of course, he has many names. So Lu Dongbing, um, in the temple, we call him Chun Yang. And he is he also have a name uh, after he become a Taoist. So Lu Dongbing is also named as Lu Chun Yang. And um, after he become a Taoist, he, his name is Chun Yang Zi. So notice this Zi here. Does this sound familiar? There is no... Kong zi, and there is the Lao zi. So if there is a zi behind the name, that means this person is a, is a scholar or a Tao cultivator or somebody who is no longer uh, modeling in the earthy realm. They no long, they are trying to get rid of the worthy, worldly desire. So notice that his name is also called Chun Yangzi. So he was born in uh, Tang Dynasty, and he was a Chinese scholar and a poet. As you can see, it's marked red here. And he was born in uh, Sanxi province, China. So his appearance is, he carry a sword, sword. Is it sword or sword? <laughs> anyway, sword. It's a two-edged sword. So when he removed that sword, he can dispel evil spirit and that gave him the power of invisibility. And he often carry a fly whisk, a fly whisk. I can show you in the next slide. And he often dress as a scholar. As you can see, he wear a scholar hat right here. So this is the, his uh, sword. This is the flying whisk. And he often dressed as a scholar. In Confucius time, the students are often de demand to wear this kind of a uh, hairstyle. And this is the this is the Taoist head, and this is the Confucius. Con uh, this back back in those time where you want to be a Confucius student, you have to tie your hair this way. And sometimes you will see that he he bring a gore right here in these two image. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about his story. At age three, he studied all scripture. So he's a very smart boy. And uh, I think his dad passed away when he was young. And, it, and at age eight, he comprehend all literature, and was a writer and a poet. Nama, maybe you can help to read this section. Age 19, he passed the reg regional test, become famous. Age 21, he married. Age 26, he passed the province exam at the top level civil service exam. At age 33, he tried the first time, but he failed. At age 43, he tried the second time, but failed again. At age 46, he tried the third time, but he failed the third time. Thank you, Naman. So um, this is how the Chinese scholar need to take the test. At first, they have to take it in a local level. Once they succeed in the local level, then they are encouraged to take in a top level civil service exam. So the place they usually go to is Chang'an or Beijing. So this is... Um, this was his journey. He failed three times. So in the end, he was disappointed and frustrated. And of course, um, he did not want to go home because everybody will ask him, how did it go? And it, it did not went well. So he was wandering around on the street in a local bar. And this is where he met Zhong Li. Zhong Li Chen. So Zhong Li Chen is a very important character here because this person is his teacher. This person teach him all he can uh, to become a Taoist. 
and to teach him all the miracles that he, uh, because uh, as a Taoist back then, you need to perform some miracle, just like Jesus time. He need to cure the sick and the blind, need to perform some, some kind of magic. So Zhong Lichen has that ability. So uh, in the end, he taught Lu Dong Bing all those. So just a brief introduction of the A immortal. So these are the A, the famous A immortal. The A immortal consists of a Cao Guo Jiu, Han Xiang Zi, He Xian Gu, Lan Cai He, Li Tie Guai, Lu Dong Bing, Zhang Guo Lao, and Zhong Li Quan. So inside of this picture. Can we see Lu Dongbing? Let's see where he is. So he's right here, right? So which one is Zhong Lichen? Zhong Lichen, we can see that oh, this one. He's he usually like to show off his belly, sort of like Buddha Mitreya, but his belly is a little smaller than Buddha Mitreya. And sometimes we can see that uh, he wear uh, he carry a fan, a big fan. So let's look at this picture here. So in this picture, you also see his big belly too. And um, back then they always have a long mustache. So just keep in mind, his name is Zhong Li Qian. So when he met, so on the day that he was wandering on the street and finally he went to the local bar, he's, he heard Zhong Li Qian is um, reciting a poem. And he find that this poem was beautiful. So Lu Dongbing responded with his poem. So this is what he said. Giacomo, would you like to share your angelic voice with us uh, to for the blue part? Okay. Thank I you. was born in a family of Confucian scholars in a period of peace. I found the garments of a government official too heavy and prefer peace and clothes. What is the meaning of pursue, pursuing, striving for fame and wealth? There is the heavenly sovereign in the palace of heaven to serve. Thank you, Giacomo, for sharing your angelic voice with us. So from this poem, we know that Lu Dongbing want to live in a different life and the life will be simple and plain, more like, more like us, um, like the, we, like we are all um, Dao De Jing's uh, disciple, and we know that what Lao Zi want for all of us. So we can see that um, he will be a good Dao practitioner. So after Zhong Li Quan heard his poem, he asked him if you want to seek his spiritual path. So meaning that he need to give away everything. Need to leave his wife, his family, and maybe leave his parents. But although Lu Dongbing has the mind of wanting to cultivate, but he has not made up his mind yet, so he declined. So Zhong Li invite him to his temple, to come to his temple. Um, so Lu Dongbing was not. At that time, Lu Dongbing was not ready, so both of them say goodbye. So eventually, Lu Dongbing made up his mind. He went to visit Zhong Li. And when he arrived at the temple, Zhong Li invited him to, to take a nap because he is walking far. So uh, Zhong Li asked him to take a nap on this pillow. And there is something miracle about this pillow because with this pillow uh Zhong Li Chen asked, Zhong Li asked will tell him that for anybody who sleep on this pillow your dream will be fulfilled and you can see whatever you want to see in the future so Zhong Li say okay so you're gonna sleep, sleep on this pillow while I make you a meal Lu Dong Bing agreed to sleep on the pillow and let's see what he dream of 
<laughs> now let me ask uh, Jerome to read this slide for us. Hold on. He dreamed about his 50 years of journey. He passed the civil service exam with highest score, became prime minister. He enjoyed his wealth, fame, power, and beautiful wife, children, and servants. Then he was accused of crimes, betrayed, and accused of traitor. His wife and children died. Once a person with glory, fame, and power suddenly become so miserable after being betrayed. Feeling so despair and regretting his life, he woke up sweating, realizing it is only a bad dream. So we can see his life from this dream. So he woke up. So when he woke up, Zhong Liquan was still cooking the mirror. Zhong Li say, while the millet is still cooking in the pot, you have completed your life in your dream. So this pillow is so spectacular. <laughs> so once Li Dongbing slipped on this pillow, he finally realized that we have already known. That is, life is an illusion. Life is a dream. Have you all been awakened from this dream? And I'm sure most of you here have already awakened. I mean, we are in, most of us are in our 50 already, right? Uh, Jerome, or, Jerome definitely understand what the, the dream is about. We all, have a, we all have our dream. And now we come to a realization that, wow, our loved one can pass away. Our fame can go away. Uh, our power can go away. So by the time when we die, what are we left? There's really nothing except our karma and our wisdom. So Li Dongbing understand this, he begged Zhong Li, can I be your disciple? Because he understand um, perhaps only his teacher Zhong Li can save him. But Zhong Li Chen is concerned. Maybe he will change his uh, determination in the midway. So Zhong Li want to give him some test. So what kind of test? If you understand about Li Dongbing's story, you will know that there's 10 famous trial that he must go through. And he went through and he passed to the teacher's satisfa satisfaction. So let's see what is his trial. There's total 10 trial. Li Dongbing practiced sincerely in the high mountain, meditating, wanting to practice Tao. However, Zhong Li think that he may not have the faith. Faith is very important. So he, he basically, the teacher basically make up all this test to make sure Lu Dongbing is totally ready for this. So number one. Now, who can help to read number one? Thank you, Giacomo. Passing families, one day Lu came back from work and found out that all his families died. Without sadness or remorse, he started to prepare the dress and coffin necessary for bur burial. But later his loved one revived and lived on. Lu was still without sadness or joyous feeling. Thank you, Giacomo. <laughs> so when he found out that his family died, he did not shed any tear. And... He just go on, carry on things as normal. Of course, uh, at this time we understand, we we already know that you don't be no longer cling on life and death. And when his family come back alive, he still shown the same emotion. Um, and at the end of our Tao practice, this is how we want it to be. Uh, but maybe Li Dongbing's uh, emotion is a little extreme. But definitely, this is the midway. And number two, let me read number two. Buyers only pay half. Li was selling goods in the market, and there comes a buyer bargain with him the price. After agreeing on the price, Li hand him the stuff. But the buyer refused to pay in full. 
then he walked away. We would not argue and then he walked away. Um, so the buyer only pay half and you just you don't be just let him go. He was not did not show any sign of anger. And number three, Jokomo can uh Jerome, can you help me? Number three. Number three. The beggar wants more. On the first day of the lunar calendar, Lu met with the beggar. After giving him some money, the beggar kept asking for more and threw vulgar words at him. Lu left the scene with a smile. I think this is a beautiful story. Um, so in Tao cultivation, we really have to practice our endurance and our temper. So if there's people slander in front of you, say bad words in front of you, what is your composure? What will your temperament be? And surprisingly, Lu left the scene with a smile. So who can do that in our society? If nobody can, let us be the first one. And that's read number four. Anyone want to read number four? Okay. Robert, thank you. Pro protecting the sheep and confronting hungry tiger. Lou was once a shepherd. During his tenure, a hungry tiger was eyeing the goats under his care. Lou protected the goats by sending them down to the hillside and stood in front of the tiger. The hungry tiger was awed to see this and left without hurting Lou. Thank you, Robert, for sharing your angelic voice with us. So this story, it's also amazing too. You don't being want to protect his sheep and he does not worry about his life is being in danger. He's not afraid of the tiger. How brave is he? Can we imagine we are in his shoes? Will we be able to do the same? <laughs> um, I, I probably cannot do the same. Number five, temptation from a beauty. Let me read number five. Lu Dongbing was studying at a small hunt on a mountain when a beautiful woman came by and asked if she could stay there for a night since she was lost. The night, so she, of course he accepted. So the night come, this beautiful lady was flirting and trying to get Lu to have sex with her, but Lu was untouched by such temptation. And uh, so by reading uh, story number five or trial number five, we know that indeed Lui is a very diligent cultivator. He's not afraid of life and death. He's not bothered by sexual indulgence. He's not afraid of life. He does not cling on money. He is a perfect Tao cultivator. And number six, who would like to not read number six? I can read. Thank you, Giacomo. One day, Lou came back to, to his house and saw that he had been burglarized and lost all his belongings. Without becoming angry, he started to work on his farm. As he, as he dug into the ground, he found countless pieces of gold. He uncovered the earth without taking a single piece of the gold. Thank you, Giacomo, for sharing your angelic voice with us. This story, I mean, this trial, it's also amazing too. First of all, his belonging, his money was burglarized, but he was not angry at all. And then later on, he find a gold um, on the ground and he did not think that's his. And he put it back, the whole sum. So that's amazing. Can I, wa I want to ask all of you, um, if this one comes to you right in front of you, can you pass the test? But keep in mind, all these tests are being um, put out by his teacher. And of course, Li Dongbing does not know that it was done by his teacher, Zhongli. It was all, it, we can say it's like a setup to check if he will pass the test. Number seven and number eight. Giacomo, you can help to read number seven, please. Liu bought some bronze utensils at the market. Upon returning home, he realized that all the utensils were made of gold 
and immediately return them to the seller. Thank you, Giacomo. So um, the bronze is supposed to be selling at a cheaper price, but we don't be realized it was gold. So we don't be want to remind the vendor, hey, this is a gold part, gold copperware. It's supposed to sell at a much more money. So this one shows his integrity, his honesty, and he is a number one doll cultivator. Uh, in the, after the, after this session here, I want you to kind of remember all this test that he went through. How many tests can we pass? We will be lucky if we can pass at least five, right? And uh, let's go to number eight. Thank you, Giacomo. A crazy Taoist was selling medicine on the street, telling people that his magic, magic potion would have one of two outcomes. Either the drinker would die on the spot or the drinker would become immortal. No one would dare to try except Lu, who bought and tried the potion. Nothing happened to him. Thank you, Giacomo, for sharing your angelic voice with us. So why would you why would you don't be want to try? Could he be that could it be that he wants to become an immortal really bad? Because uh, before the trial comes, um, Li Dongbin already, remember he went, he sleep on the pillow and he understand life is impermanent, everything is illusion. So he just want to become an imp immortal. So he already forsake life and death. Life and death doesn't matter for him. So he want to be an immortal really bad. So he try. And what go through his mind? If he die, then he die. But there's 50-50 chance that this potion can be tr can be real, right? So he give it a try. And we all know that the potion was fake. It was just some kind of Chinese herb. And uh, number nine and 10, I would like to invite Naman to share his angelic voice with us. Naman, would you read number nine with us? Yeah. Staying, staying calm on a ferry in the in a thunder. A river is elevated due to heavy rain. Lou and other passengers were on a boat crossing the river. Before reaching the middle of the journey, the uh, weather deteriorated and most of the passengers except Lou become worried. Lou said still not worried about life and death. Thank you, Naman, for sharing uh, your angelic voice with us. So this number nine trial reminds me of the story in Bible. I think uh, Jesus was uh, boating together with some of his disciples and the boat started shaking. And Jesus uh, tell them not to, to be calm and not to worry, right? There's one story on that. And of course, uh, here we see that Lu was not worried because he already let go of life and death. Um, so at this point, we know that Lu is, uh, he has already part of a nearly per perfection. And let's read number 10. I think number 10 story or trial is incredible. Naman, uh, please read number 10 for us. Yeah, sure. Willing to die to repay the karma from past life. Lou was alone in a room. In midnight, suddenly ghosts and monsters appeared and wanting to kill Lou. Showing no sense of fear, Lou continued to sit still. Without paying attention to them, then a group of devils holding swords and screen. You killed us in the previous life. Now it's our turn to take yours. Without any fear, the reply to kill me, it's easy. Not need, not need to so scream. And Louis extend his neck. All of a sudden, the sky turned blue and those ghosts and devils disappeared. It's only one who happened to be his teacher and mentor in Taoist stories, was looking and laughing at him while all these events were happening. Thank you, Naman, for sharing your angelic voice with us. So let's ask us, 
if number 10 trial happened to us, what will we be? We will be frightened, right? And the ghost, the ghost and monster come upon us. And all these ghosts and monsters, they, they come with their weapon. They have blood on their hands. And they look so violent and fearful. And they want to take our life. What will our emotion be? But Lou's reaction was, okay, I'm ready to die. Since I already, since I commit some bad karma onto you. So just take my life. So he say it so easily without any anxiety, without any worry, without any fear. To me, that's incredible. And he even extend his neck. Can you imagine that? Who can do this in our time? Now I now we go through all those 10 trials. So I think about number 10. I think probably I can handle number 10. <laughs> because uh, I, I understand life is impermanent. It's not how long we live. It's about how deep and how much understanding we have about life. So one day when we die, what are we going to bring to us? We will bring karma. Um, Zhong Chen is glad that Lu Dong being passed the test. So here comes another test. So uh, Zhong Chen asks, I'm going to teach you the magic finger. Everything that you touch will turn into gold. So Lu Dong being asked, once it's turning to gold, will it be permanent? So Zhong Li replied, after the, the material is transforming from rock or anything to gold, it will turn back to rock after 300 years. Then Lu replied, I do not want to learn this because it will hurt people after 300 years. How beautiful that is. And I'm sure none of you want to learn the magic finger. Do you? <laughs> because the magic finger will benefit you. But after 300 years, the gold, whoever have the gold, will be so, um, what's the adjective? Devastating, right? So we know that this is the last test. This is indeed the last test. Zhong Chen spent few years teaching all the Tao practice and all the miracle to Lu Dongbing. And before he leave Lu Dongbing, and before he ascended to heaven, he tell Lu Dongbing, you know, after you do all this practice, eventually you are going to ascend it with me. And you, I will see you up there. But Lu Dongbing say, if I cannot bring salvation to all ascension beings, I will not ascend to heaven. This kind of statement I heard many times from the Siddha Garba. He is the Bodhisattva in hell. He said, I don't want to be a Buddha unless I save all ascension beings in hell. And now he's spreading his wisdom in the underworld. Guan Yin Bodhisattva also have the same saying too. Uh, I want to I want to save all the people who is crying. I want to save all the people who is praying to me. If those people are not saved, I will not become Buddha. That's why we call Guan Yin Bodhisattva. We don't call Guan Yin Buddha. But we all know that Guan Yin Bodhisattva is qualified to be a Guan Yin Buddha already. Yet, she claimed herself to be a Bodhisattva. So how wonderful this statement is. Lu Dongbing said, if I cannot bring salvation to all the sentient beings, that's including you and me, I will not ascend to heaven. So just a few notes. His name, Lu Dongbing, he was uh, revered by all levels of social class. Many people pay reverence to him, including the barbers, the prostitute the tofu maker, the shoemaker, the street performer, and the street herbal vendor. So let me explain to you about the barber. 
So um, many barbers worship him because at one time in the Ming Dynasty, there was a uh, emperor named Zhu Yuanzhang. He has uh, many uh, blister on his head. He invite many barber come to him to to take care of his hair, but many barber hurt his head instead while um, they are shaving his uh, head because his head has many blister. When Li Dongbin heard that, he disguised himself as a barber and he did wonderful jobs to the emperor in the Ming Dynasty. And because of this, he saved many barbers' lives. Therefore, a lot of barbers worship him as a deity. The second one, the prostitute. So many young scholar and um, prostitute worship him. Why? Because uh, back in his time, one day he was staying in a motel and he heard there's people next door. There's some kind of fighting. So he asked, why are you fighting? He see that many guys are trying to beat up one scholar and he rescued a scholar and he asked the scholar what happened. So this scholar say, I am a poor scholar. I supposed to marry my fiance. My fiance is called Huai Pioni because of her family is poor. Her father sell her to a prostitution house. His father continue to spend the money uh, from her salary. And this scholar, it's very poor. He has no way to save her. So every time, periodically, he will come to this uh, prostitution house to want to see her. But every time he come, all the men come to be here. So Li Chun Yang Zhu Si was so kind and nice. He want to see what kind of woman is the white peony. So he, one day he paid lots of money to this prostitution house and in order to spend a night with Huai Peony. And uh, Li Dongbin tried to, he tried to flirt with her, but she was unmoved. And he tried to give her wine, but she does not want to take any wine. And he tried to uh, give him, give her a lot of jewelry, but she does not want to take any. So in the end, he understand this lady, Huai Peony, it's very, uh, it's such a pure woman. So eventually he saved her. And that's why in the future, all the prostitute worship Lu Dongbin. And we can see that he is a very widely worshiped figure among the society in the, we can say in the lower class or the middle class too. And he was highly respected in Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism. And he lived for 120 years old. So he has many names. He's, he is named as uh, Miao Tong Zhen Ren. In English, it's called a perf perfect man of sublime communion. Um, he was named this by Emperor Hui Zhong in the Song Dynasty. And he is also named the perfect sovereign Chun Yang, who preaches author orthodoxy and exhorts to salvation. In Chinese, it's called Chun Yang Yan Zheng Jing Hua Zhen Jun. So he's also uh, widely worshipped among the police department too. Uh, this is during the emperor Shizhu of the Yang Yuan Dynasty. And he's also the imperial sovereign, Chun Yang, and protector who preaches salvation. In English, it's called uh, Chun Yang Yan Hua Fu Yu Di Jun. Uh, this name is popular in the Emperor Wu Zhong of the Yuan Dynasty. So in uh, Confucianism, he's called a teacher of pure yin. Pure yin. It's so when we talk about yin, we like to think about yin. So this we are in this duality. There's there's a uh, the yin and the yin. So he's called the pure yin, and it's for us too. If we want to elevate to heaven, if we want to get out of samsara, we want to maintain our mental state to pure yin too, and that is complete 
uh, align our mental health, align our qi, align our energy to yin, to tao. If we can align our energy to tao, we maintain the energy of pure yin. And in Buddhism, he's called the Wenli Buddha. In Taoism, he's called the mystic and holy Taoist. So in the Dharma protecting deity of Tao, he's called Chun Yang. He, we call him Lu Zhu or Lu Chun Yang or Lu Chun Yang Zhu Si. So what is Chun? Chun means pure. So if you will go to China or if you go to uh, Taiwan or Hong Kong, if you want to buy 100% cotton or 100% wool, you will need to recognize this word. This word is pure, chun. Sometimes we have this, uh, some clothes that we want to buy, if it's 100% wool made, it will say chun. So it's this chun, this word you need to remember. And yang is this word here, yang. Uh, it's denoted by three straight lines. So I basically finished my sharing on Lu Chun Yang, the Dharma protector. If mistakes were made or say during today's sharing, I ask the forgiveness from the Heavenly Mother, Buddha Maitreya, Chico Buddha, Patriarch, Sister Sibu, Great Master, and Senior Master, Engineer Master Lee. 